Hey everyone, uh, I'm Jacob Fritz with Homestead Road. We're here at one of our properties in Minnetonka and I'll be taking you on a tour with one of our stagers at Lionheart and we'll be asking her a couple questions. Follow me. I'm here with Jessica. Jessica is uh, one of the stagers with Lionheart. Uh, how's it going, Jessica? Great. You yeah. want us to do a little introduction about yourself and your company? I've been with the company for six years and a lot of times I'm on site at the beginning of the staging process, helping to put the design together and with the, the start of the setup. Um, so here we have the living room area. Um, kind of when you walk into a home or when you first start staging a home, how do you set the theme or the environment for a living room? Well, the first thing we do, um, especially in an open concept living room like this, is we choose the furniture to dictate the flow of the room. Um, so in this case, we arrange them to sort of reflect the angles of the wall, have a nice open space from the foyer leading into the dining room and the rest of it. And because there's a nice airy color palette in here, we also chose kind of airy furniture with the thin legs, so there's lots of floor space and, and an open feel when right. you walk into it. Yeah, no, I definitely feel the hominess right when you walk in. It's very bright and um, makes you feel right at home. Mm. Um, and then we can continue into the kitchen area here. So when you come into a kitchen and for buyers, what do you usually like to decide to put into a kitchen and how do you make um, that kind of just work with how the kitchen looks in the um, area surrounding it? Yeah, um, usually a kitchen is a space with a lot of flat surfaces and clean lines. And so we always like to make sure we add a little bit of texture into it. That's usually accomplished by making sure we have some plants somewhere it has irregular lines to kind of break it up. Um, another thing that we always try to do is have a focal point of decor on the countertop. We don't want to clutter it up with too many different things, mm -hmm. um, but we'll find in a lot of kitchens, there's kind of a shadowy corner at the far end of it. Even this kitchen has one there. And so we like to put a little decorative something there to draw the eye all the way to the end of the kitchen, especially because this is the space that buyers are going to stand to admire it and your real estate photographer is going to take the listing photos. Um, so it's just a good little focal point um, to brighten up a shadowy corner there. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I noticed that too right away. You guys kind of covered that area up and it kind of makes um, just the darker parts look lighter, I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah, looks great. All right, moving into the dining room area. Um, how do you make a dining room feel spacious and um, just comfortable for the home buyers? Um, the first thing that we have to decide is the size of the table we're going to use. And so this room is really nice because it's it's wide and open on this side, but it does narrow a little bit as it goes in. So we opted to use a table that was a little bit more smaller scale. Um, and we also only did four chairs, even though it's a formal dining room area, the more floor space you have visible, the airier it seems. Um, Another thing with this one, just because this house has been really recently remodeled, we did a little bit more of a contemporary presentation on the tabletop instead of lots of layers of napkins and chargers and that kind of thing. Having just a statement centerpiece makes it seem a little bit more um, temp uh, contemporary and then also again, open and airy. Yeah, it does feel very open and it feels very simple, but also makes it stand out and feels um, very comfortable going in from the living room to the dining room. Um, it's an easy transition, I feel, and you guys mm -hmm. do a great job at that. Thank you. Another thing to note about the, the airiness is just using a mirror. It reflects the light. Um, it keeps the space light rather than having, you know, a heavy frame over there. Um, and that's a really good tip for if you want to keep the space feeling open or brighten it up a little bit. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much. And now we'll head up into the bedroom area. We'll check out the finished bedroom up here. Thanks, Jessica. You brought up some good points uh, downstairs about the mirror and just some other tips. But um, when it comes to the start to finish process, how do you guys kind of go about that? Or what's the, um, what's the steps you guys take when you first get to the house to the completion of it? Mm. Um, you know, when we're planning a staging design, the first thing we'll do is take a look at the home and get 
a feel for the size and scale of the furniture required as well as thinking about the types of people who are going to be moving in here. What are they going to be looking for? Um, in the case of this bedroom that we're in here, um, we know that this is a little bit older home that's been recently updated and so we opted for more of a transitional style, something that will appeal to probably the younger families that are going to be moving in, but also doesn't stray too far on the modern side, you know, kind of keeping with that original character of the home. And then whenever we stage a bedroom, we always make sure to do a little something in the ensuite bathroom. Um, usually that stays pretty simple. We just do some crisp linens and again with the plants. We love using house plants because just like with the kitchen, the bathroom has a lot of really sharp angles and harsh lines and so that just adds a little bit of life while still staying really simple. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I'm just going to ask her a few questions about um, staging. Homestead Road works with line hearts a lot, so um, we're just going to jump into questions if that's all right with you. Great. Awesome. So um, how long have you been staging with line heart? I've been with Lionheart for about six years now, although the company's been around since 1999. So oh, wow. Okay. Much before my time there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Um, and then what is, what's your position? And can you just describe it and tell the audience a little bit about what you do there? Yeah, I'm one of the staging consultants with Lionheart. So I usually go into a home at the beginning of the staging process. If people are living there, I help them decide what to keep and how to set up uh, what they have, um, and if it's an empty home, I help uh, get the designs together uh, for that at the beginning of the process. Awesome, that sounds great. Um, and then we're just gonna ask you a couple of questions about um, whether it's this home or houses you've done in the past. So um, hopefully we'll just hop right into it. Okay. And we'll say um, for different homes that you do, how do you kind of decide on the theme or the different styles that you go into when staging a home? Sure. Well, with home staging, we try to stay away from going too much in a themey direction. We usually like to leave that a little bit more for personal design, okay. you know, an Italian bistro kitchen or a, an underwater themed bathroom. We, we try to keep it a little bit more neutral than that. Um, but the, the way we decide the style is really by looking at the character of the house. We look at the age, we look at if it's contemporary or transitional mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, mid-century house, and then we tailor our design, um, to fit that. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Especially with the home that, uh, we walked around today, um, I could re really feel the sense of warmth and kind of closure as you walk around mm -hmm. the whole house. So, um, you could definitely see that what you were saying right there just felt felt like you guys knew exactly how to pick out um, each thing of furniture and everything around the home. So I thought that was really good. Um, what are some common mistakes that homeowners um, often make when preparing for a home sale? Or some common mistakes about staging that they don't really know about? Sure. You know, something that I will see from time to time is um, rather than focusing your your limited efforts and resources on the most important rooms sometimes people will try to do a little too much of everything and do a little bit of staging in every room like they might clear everything out and put just a sofa in the middle of an empty room mm -hmm. and sometimes that looks a little unfinished and it would honestly be better in those spaces just to leave it empty and put whatever furniture or resources you do have in the most important rooms right. of the home and, and really make those stand out. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, I totally get that. Um, kind of counteracting or going off that, um, what's the most impactful change that staging can bring to a home or how do you kind of grab the emotion um, out of a house when you're staging? With staging, we really focus on grabbing people with that first impression mm -hmm. um, and so whether that is the when they're scrolling through the listing photos or that first moment they walk into each room um, that is where we have an opportunity to have some influence on their emotions okay. so everything from the lighting to uh, having a focal point uh, that feels balanced and in the proper place it'll help people feel 
warm and at ease. And you know, when you get those interior design principles dialed in just right, so things feel in scale and in balance, yeah. that helps people feel good when okay. they walk into the room. Mm -hmm. um, rather than walking into an empty space where you have a little bit more of an opportunity to to notice the flaws right away. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. Um, and we went on a tour of this home and um, I already think you guys do an amazing job, but um, when you just, when you walk in or when you decide on staging a home, what rooms kind of do you center at or what areas of the house do you focus on when selecting what to stage and what not to stage? That is a really good question. Uh, we always start with what we call our high priority rooms. And okay. so that would be when you first walk in that main living area, as well as the kitchen, dining room, and primary bedroom. Uh, those are the rooms that either buyers see first or they have the most emotion tied to them. Mm -hmm. And so it's really good if you're, if you're on a budget or short on time to focus on those spaces. Other rooms like maybe a lower level family room or some secondary bedrooms, those can also be nice to stage, especially if there's something unusual about them. Yep. But um, definitely not as impactful on the emotion and therefore on the sale of the house as those um, priority rooms that I right. mentioned. Yeah, definitely. You don't need to go walking into a room and focus on the second floor hidden bathroom exactly. or the, the closet in the laundry room. It, it yeah. can be fun to decorate those, but realistically, you're not gonna get your return on investment mm -hmm. um, as much by focusing on those spaces. Right, yep, I totally agree. Um, and I know we kind of talked about this a little bit before, but what tips can you give homeowners who want to stage on a budget? Hmm. Definitely considering, you know, what we are talking about, focusing on those high priority spaces. Mm -hmm. um, another thing would be, um, you know, a lot of people know when it comes to home staging, you, you clear things out, you declutter, you depersonalize, but really that is just the first half of the equation. The, okay. the other half of the staging process is making sure you introduce a few decorative elements back in, yeah. but it's just making sure that um, they're the right, they're the right things. And, and I think the, the biggest thing that's easy to, I guess you could say get wrong when you're staging is that either your artwork or your furniture is just out of scale. Um, right. You know, a lot of times when we're living there, we have a really comfy oversized sofa mm -hmm. or a favorite piece of art that we like that's super tiny. And um, by focusing on getting the proportions right, that is one of the, the best things you can do to help your house feel balanced and professionally um, designed. Yeah, yeah. Um, you kind of touched on your favorite parts or pieces that you like to incorporate. Um, what elements or what are your kind of go-to pieces um, when you decide on staging a home? Do you always have a certain plant or something you guys use or a um, living room table that you guys like to use? How do you kind of go about uh, your go-to pieces? Yeah, I, I know I've talked about the plants. We love plants because mm -hmm. they add um, some irregular textures um, okay. and you know they help break up those really harsh lines that you often see in empty homes but the other thing that they do is you know we talked about you you declutter depersonalize and so sometimes you're left with a little bit of a lifeless space when you do that so mm -hmm. bringing plants in helps make it seem alive without adding too much um, of your distinct personal style in there yeah yeah, no, I agree. Um, another question that we have is, uh, what are your favorite staging elements? Or um, how has staging evolved and some trends that you're seeing now compared to maybe, let's say, when you guys started or when you even started working at Lionheart a couple of years ago? How has kind sure. of been evolved or changed? You know, staging as we know it today has been around since about the 1970s. And okay. so, Probably the biggest change that we've seen in the recent decade or so is that there's much more familiarity with it through um, TV shows, HGTV, and mm -hmm. social media, of course, 
Whereas when staging started, the message was kind of, you know, just clear everything out and, you know, it doesn't really matter as much what you put back in, just put in something that you like, something pretty. Right. Um, now people pretty much have immediate access to whatever the latest trend is, whatever someone did on the last HGTV show. Mm -hmm. And so buyers have that in their mind when they're, when they're touring the house that they're looking at. Yep. And, um, you might not be able to purchase all of the the furniture that's following this latest trend that's not practical for anyone to do mm -hmm. but having a few elements you know some art or some tabletop accessories that are in line with whatever you're seeing on those programs on you know the popular instagram reels right um that's gonna help give buyers what they're expecting to see mm -hmm. when they walk into a space. Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, like I would always go into an open house or a house and you see the whole bedroom, kid's bedroom decked out in a race car theme and you think, oh, like I, I'm gonna buy this house just cause the room looks exactly like that. Or yeah. the whole house is furnished and it's just gonna come with all those things. So it is definitely, I feel different from what I thought at first about staging, but um, yeah, I'm sure it has grown over the years and changed and varied in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about a little about staging. Um, let's get into a little bit about Lionheart. Um, that's where you work. That's um, how Homestead Road works with you guys a lot. And I just want to talk about what's your guys' mission or your kind of goal or what do you guys want to bring to the table um, when it comes to what you guys do? Sure. You know... Lionheart um, comes in at the end of the process of getting your house ready for sale. We're either working with people who have lived there for years, updated things, and now they're getting ready to move, or with a company like Homestead, um, where you guys do a whole process of renovations um, to your properties. And so we come in at the very end of that and really like to take care of everything when it comes to knowing what the house needs and how to put that design together. Mm -hmm. And so so it's really nice as you're dealing with, um, you know, especially for, for people who don't sell their home every day, yeah. um, you know, it might be one of their, their biggest assets and they have other things to deal with as they're getting ready to move. So we just want to take all the stress of figuring out what to put in there off of their hands, mm -hmm. um, we can figure all that out. So um, you know they can walk in once we get through, and it's it's all done and right. and good to go. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So you, I mean, we love working with you guys. It's always been very easy and smooth in the past. Um, how would you describe your guys' relationship with Homestead Road? Um, whether it's this house we worked on already today, or um, just in the past, how kind of you guys? work with us or communication parts or just when you arrive on the home, um, how has it been with Homestead Road? Yeah, you know, with this house that we're sitting in right now, it was really interesting because we first saw this house when we were putting the design together before your renovation. And mm -hmm. so it, it's been really cool to see your process of what you decide to change um in more of these uh, these permanent elements of yeah. the home and and then we come in with um you know those finishing touches but it's been great working with homestead we've worked with you guys for years and i think we kind of have a little formula down now of of what tends to to work best in the types of houses that you do yeah. and so um you know it's always really fun to see um how that comes together at the end mm -hmm. i know we were talking about earlier how Sometimes you arrive at a house and it might be different from um, when you first saw it, but um, you guys always come in here and do a great job with kind of the product what we bring to, to you. So it's kind of, we work together and then we also kind of surprise each other at different points that's, as well. That's true. There's there's sometimes those, those last minute adjustments that have to be made. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, that's why we always have a stager on site just so you know, no matter how much you plan stuff ahead of time, there's always going to be something with the house that surprises you last minute. Yeah. So yeah. we try to be prepared for that. And I think you guys do a great job. So that's all the questions I have for you today. Um, it was really nice getting to know you and talking about um, Lionheart and this home that we worked on today. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure to check out uh, Lionheart Home Staging. Um, go follow their social media. 
And like always, stay up to date with Homestead Roads updates and our social media pages and comment your thoughts on this video below. Thank you guys for watching and me and Jessica will see you guys next time. Thanks.